Welcome to Ceramic Bead Making with Earth Nocturne. This is Forming with Slabs Part 1. Now that we have formed beads with just our hands, we're going to use some more tools to roll out a slab and make some pendants. First I've cut off a slab of clay from a block and I'm slamming it down to remove any air bubbles and to make it a uniform wetness throughout the clay. And I'll just roll it down to get it evened out at first, not using any guides. But after it gets a bit thinner, rolling side to side and corner to corner, I will use some quarter inch dowels to help keep the thickness uniform throughout the slab. You see I'm going up and down and side to side to stretch out the clay in as many directions as possible. Now the slab has gotten too wide for my rolling pin, so I'm going to cut it in half and put some aside while I roll down the other slab to an eighth of an inch with the wood stirring sticks. To keep the, the other clay moist, keep it on a plastic bag. You can cover it if you're not going to use it for a while with another plastic bag. And using the paint stirring slats, I've got the slab down to an eighth of an inch now. And I'm using a metal ribs to a rib to remove the canvas marks from the front and the other the back of the slab. Here's an example of the cutters that I'll be using. You may have some different ones that you want to use. But first we'll make some flat, untextured pendants. Very simple to make and the basis for many types of decoration on pendants. Here I'm using cornstarch to cut it out. It works but it can be warped sometimes because you'll have to push it through and you can also use WD-40 or some other oil to keep the clay from sticking to the cutters. This too can uh, lead to warping because the, uh, the piece has to be pushed out after it's been cut. I prefer to use a plastic wrap for pendants that don't have any texture on it or relief as it, it leaves a nice edge on the, the top half and also keeps the pendant from warping. They come out nice and flat out of the firing. With the waste clay that is after you cut out a slab, you can use smaller cutters to make uh, spacer beads or star charms, any smaller beads, and they'll all be a nice uniform thickness. Now we'll work on getting our threading holes you can, here I'm first using a, an embossing tool from ZM Tools. It has a ball tip, and this works very well. I, I use it very often. On the other side, you'll be pulling the clay from the inside of the hole to the outside and letting it dry a bit and before you scrape it off. You can also use a drill bit to make a nice clean threading hole. Now, as you'll notice, the clay is uh, leather hard at this stage. You'll, you'll not want to place holes when the clay is too wet or it will tear it and make it warp or pull it out of shape. So wait until it's set up until you place your hole. This is the way I usually prefer to use is a Kemper Tools 1 8 round cutter. An eighth of an inch. It makes a nice clean hole and doesn't warp the piece. A knitting needle will also work. Once again you slide it through and then on the other side make sure the clay comes out from the hole and we will be removing that in a few minutes once it once it dries a bit. You can remove the clay by using a metal rib. It all comes off in one piece and leaves it nice and smooth on the back. This will help later when you're placing a bale or threading to have a nice even hole. 
You can also use the rib to clean the edges and make them nice and softened. A fiddling knife also works to remove the excess clay from the threading hole and to soften the edges. Or a blade tool from a carving set that I bought online for a couple of dollars. It has a lot of great tools in it. This one is a great cleanup tool. You can then use a tiny bit of water to clean up the edges a little bit more. Don't use too much or the piece may warp and the grog might come to the edges and make them a little bit rough. Now we'll take some basic flat pendants and just make some very easy marks in them with a knitting needle to add a little bit of texture to the surface. I'm using a little water to soften the edge and then just using a knitting needle to make some basic some basic lines in the, the clay. You can use an embossing tool or carving tools if you like. Even a pencil will work to make some nice lines. And then I wiped the clay off with my fingers. Try not to do that if you can. Wait until the the lines are dried and the clay that you pulled, that you carved off has dried a bit and then you can use a brush to sweep it off. It won't smear the clay as much. And for the next minute or so I'll just be making some lines just to show you how the designs from the examples were made. Very simply, I'll be making a, a longer video on carving and incising down the road a bit. This will just get you started to show you how, how easy it is to make a pendant with some texture on it. Now's the time to sweep off those dried burrs and bits of clay once it's been sitting for a bit. To glaze fire these pendants, you'll need to make some special hooks out of a heavy cantle wire. 18 gauge works very well. And have a bead rack for firing the pendants. This one works well. There are other brands available. Or you could use the way that I used before, which is posts and uh, wires. But this is how I usually do pendants, is on these racks. And here it is in the kiln. That will be it for this video. Please join me next time for Forming with Slabs Part 2, where we'll do some cutouts on some flat pendants. Thanks for watching.